Hi everybody, Scott Card here with another quick tip on using Proteus. Today I'd like to talk to you about two new features uh, offered by Proteus. One of them is importing a DXF file and the other is a multi-board design. Okay, so uh, here you can see I've I've created uh, an AutoCAD file and uh, I've, I'm I'm saving it uh, as a DXF. Okay, so this is important that you save it as a DXF, and it doesn't have to be AutoCAD. There are uh, any, lots of software packages out there that can create a vector-based drawing and save it as a DXF, but it is important that it is DXF. And so I've just called this linear uh, X3 100 by 100 working. And uh, that's fantastic. And you can see I have one, two, three, four, five different boards that I've designed here. And so uh, why would I want to use AutoCAD? Well, anybody that's ever uh, spent much time developing a circuit board for uh, Proteus and has had to make some complicated shapes knows how difficult it can be to, to uh, actually create uh, the the drawing, uh, whether that be the circuit board or a, a, a special pad, uh, it, it's much easier to use other drawing packages for that. And so here we are, uh, we've created our uh, conventional uh, project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say file, import DXF, and we're going to point to our directory where we have it hidden. And uh, what we want to do is I'm going to bring in both layers. Uh, I was experimenting around. Unfortunately, you can't, uh, we can, you can bring in uh, individual layers and then try to align them. But for me today, I'm just going to bring in both layers and I'm going to set it uh, to go to the board edge. And then I'll say, okay. And you see it's quite large, but that's okay. And so there's our, our four boards. And if we measure them, uh, you'll see that they're all 100 by 100 millimeters. And so that's fantastic. Uh, and we could we could work on it like this and then try to uh, separate it later. Um, that that is a technique that I've used in the past and and it's it does it does work, but it's a little bit arduous. It's a little bit difficult to to, uh, to manipulate all that. And so now I want to show you the second, uh, tip, which is how to create uh, multi-board designs within Proteus. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go here, we're going to say File, we're going to say New Board. Okay, and uh, we'll just set it to default. And one of the nice things is that we can actually set up uh, different different design rules, different vias, uh, different, different uh, board thicknesses, uh, basically anything that we would be able to make with a single board, we can modify so that all the boards are different. So now I have board one and board two. Uh, and what I'll do is I will go back to uh, board one and I'm going to pick, uh, let's pick uh, this guy. So I'm going to highlight all of him and I'm going to say that I want to uh, cut to my, to my clipboard. So cut to clipboard. I'll go back over here to board two and I will paste from my clipboard. Here we go. And so now I have a, a board one and board two. So the next thing is uh, we need to, we need to create, um, create some schematic. And so in this case, you'll see that we were able to switch between board one and board two. And so here on board one, I'll just I'll just grab uh, a resistor or something here real quick. And so there's a resistor on board one. And uh, notice that it starts with R1. And if I go to uh, board two and I place it, it's also in uh, uh, R1. So each of the boards will have its own uh, numbering unless this is something you don't want to do. And so in this case, if you want the the uh, component values to be 
uh, unique for your entire design, uh, what you can do is you go into design, uh, edit sheet properties, and you want to turn off uh, local board pin IDs. Okay, so now when I place a resistor, it's R2. And if I go back here to uh, board one, and I place another one, it should be R3. And so this is, this is a great way to make sure that we don't end up with uh, two components that are called R2. Uh, and when we when we look at BOM, uh, this, this becomes a, a, a nice tool. Uh, but now the next thing is uh, having, having things called board one, board two uh, doesn't really doesn't really work for me. And if we if we take it one step further and add multiple sheets now, uh, so now I have two sheets on on one board and one sheet on another board. Uh, this can become really confusing uh, how to how to move around between them. And so what we can do is we can actually change the name of the sheets. Okay, so let's say uh, we go here to our Design Explorer, and you'll see that I have board one and board two, and so I can. Uh, rename not just the board but the sheet and so here we'll go in here and we'll edit the name we'll call this one our our main board and I'll call this uh, oops call this uh, call this main drawing so that we have a main circuit board and a main schematic and then over here uh, let's let's uh, edit this name and we'll call this uh, daughter and in daughter, you don't have to call call your sheets daughter. Let's see, we can uh, edit this name and we'll call this uh, PSU. And we'll call this one uh, MCU. Okay, so on our daughter board, we have a power supply uh, portion of the schematic and uh, MCU portion. So now when we go back, uh, we can see that uh, on our daughter board, uh, we are on sheet PSU and sheet MCU. And so we can we can also clear this up a little bit here on our schematic uh, drawing by going to our, um, our our template file. So here we go to our master sheet and I'm going to take this and I'm going to decompose it. And in here, I'm going to change this file here. I'm going to change this to board. Okay, and we can change this as well. Okay, the other thing that we'd like to have on here is the uh, sheet name. And so I'm just going to uh, real quick copy uh, these two over, and we'll change the name of them. Uh, so instead of board, we'll call this one uh, sheet. And we'll change main here to uh, at uh, S title. Okay, and so now we can see that the board is main. Uh, and the sheet uh, is called master sheet. All right, so let's go back here to our main. And that looks fantastic. We'll go over here to our daughter board and PSU and MCU. So uh, very very useful for uh, keeping track of uh, all of your all of your schematics. All right. So now let's go back to our uh, PCB layout. And you'll notice here uh, in, in our uh, main drawing, we have available to us uh, R1 and R3. And so we'll drop them on here. And when we go to our daughter board, we have uh, all, all uh, four of them. So let's, uh, let's pretend they go here. And finally, we can go to our uh, 3D view, and that's fantastic. There's our two here, and when we switch over, we switch over to our main, 
we have uh, the rest of our circuit boards. And so obviously we could take them and split them all down to uh, break them all down to our four individual pieces. All right. Hopefully you found this useful. Uh, it's a great new tool. Uh, there's a couple things that I wish Proteus would, would change about it. Uh, one of them being able to uh, import uh, to a specific location. Uh, the other one is um, uh, the other one is that uh, when when we're working in the design, that uh, nets would be shared across across the multiple boards. Uh, so, for example, if I did have a power supply board and a MCU board, I would like to be able to share uh, a node or or a net across the multiple boards. Uh, when running a simulation, that's something that we just can't do. So the suggestion that I have for you there is to basically make your entire design and then we can break it down after you finish simulating it. All right. Hopefully you found this useful and helpful. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you uh, are a fan of this type of video, uh, do subscribe, help my channel, and uh, do hit the notify bell so that uh, you're kept aware of when I update new videos. And as always, thanks for your time, and have yourself a great day. Bye now.